Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we will be looking at Galatians starting chapter 6 this lesson. But before we begin, our theme verse, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Are you feasting upon the word of God daily? Is it a joy and rejoicing in your heart? If there's, if there's anything in your heart that's hindering the joy and rejoicing that you receive from hearing the word of God, if, if you read the word of God or hear the word of God and it sounds bland or sounds boring, it means there's something in your heart, something hindering your relationship with God. I mean, of all people in the world, Christians have a right to be the most joyous people in all the world right? Sins are forgiven. They're, we're cleansed by the blood of Christ. We have a home in heaven forevermore. We have a God who loves us and gave his life for us. And God is preparing a home for us as we speak in heaven. And, and all the promises in the word of God are for us. And we have every reason to be joyous today even when things are are maybe chaotic or 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 breaking down around us christians have a right through the word of god to be joyful to be have a joy and a rejoicing in their heart now remember from galatians chapter 5 verse 1 to chapter 6 verse 10 paul is dealing with the life of Christian liberty. Paul focuses the, his letter, this part of his letter, on Christian liberty. Now, he says here in chapter 6, verse 1, Brethren, if, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Now, he says here, if a man be overtaken in a fault. Now, this Greek word for overtaken is prolambano. And pro means before, and lambano means to take. So, this Greek word strongly carries with it the idea not of a premeditation to perform some kind of sin, but of a stumbling. It means a slip or a false step into a sin, okay? It would be as if a person suddenly became aware that they, that what they were doing or what they were thinking was a sin without having any prior knowledge that it was a sin. So he's saying here, if a man be overtaken in a fault, it's not talking about someone who has been thinking about a sin for days or for weeks on end, and then they commit that sin. It's about, it's talking, this Greek word uh, brings out the meaning that it's a sin that you suddenly fall into or you suddenly slip into, or it's, it's, a, it's a wrong, some kind of wrongdoing that, it just all of a sudden happens, okay? And this Greek word for, for fault is parapetoma, parapetoma. And it means a wrong step, a mistake. It means a f to fall away. So again, this Greek word carries with it the idea of someone finding themselves in sin unknowingly and not premeditated, okay? It's not a, a premeditated sin, but an unknowing sin. It's like children growing up, and as they grow up, they need to be taught what are, what are, what's, what are sins are, what lying is, what stealing is. And they can, <laughs> they can go out and they can take, take their, another child's toy and think it's okay, but they need to be taught that taking something without asking, it's stealing. And they just slipped into it without knowing it. Or they told a lie 
and they didn't know it was a lie, but they need to be taught. And so it has that meaning to it. You know, I was thinking that as, as human beings, I think that we sin way, way more than we realize that we do. We say or we do things for people and our motives are not always right. Why, why did you really do what you did for that purpose, for that person, right? Why did you say what you said to that person? Regardless of whether that person is a Christian or maybe your boss or a coworker or somebody at the store, uh, a friend that, you know, a relative, regardless of who the person is, why did you say what you said? Why did you do what you did? And why, why did you write that email that you wrote? Okay. On, you see somebody on Facebook or wherever and, uh, they, you, 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 you know, uh, have their birthday or something happens and they post something and you see it and you want to write a response to that. Why are you writing the response? Okay. What, what, what do you honestly think about that person? Okay. What do you honestly think about that person? If we know, if we, if we knew as God knows and could see as God sees, I think we would be devastated by how much we really do sin. Why did you write that letter? or write that email, or, or on Facebook, or why did you say that? Was it because you really, deep in your heart, wanted something other than what you said or did, right? What, what are our motives? You see, because that's the real issue. God can see all the way. He, he, God, God's not blind. I mean, he, you know, Satan, Satan only sees our actions. You have to remember, Satan can't read your minds. Satan does not know what you're thinking. He can project and, and the demons can project thoughts to you and things to your life. But they don't know if you're receiving those thoughts or you're receiving their projections until you act. Once you act, then they know, aha, now I know what they're thinking. But don't get the idea that Satan can read your mind or that the demons know what you're thinking. They don't. God does, but Satan doesn't. And when he starts seeing you acting in a certain way, then he knows, ah, I've got them on, I've got them on my track. Now they're walking down the road I want them to walk down, right? But you can have projections and projections and thoughts come into your mind, but all of a sudden you cast them out and you start, you start singing to God. You start uh, quoting scripture or, 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 or praising the Lord. And he, he, and he thinks, I don't have them. I don't have them yet. Okay. And you, what you're, he can only read your actions, but God sees the thoughts. So again, Sin goes all the way to the heart of a person. Remember Isaiah 1 verses 5 and 6, right? The heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? Well, God can. God sees it. God knows your heart. He know, the Bible says he knows your thoughts afar off. It means he knows what you're going to be thinking. Who knows? Tomorrow, next week, he knows your thoughts afar off. Before you even think your thoughts, he knows they're coming. And God sees sin right at the very base, right in the very heart of who you are. And I think if we saw if how God sees and if we knew what God knows, I think we'd find out that we sin a lot more than, than what we really know, than what we're aware of. Because I think... <laughs> I think if God opened up our hearts and if we could see ourselves as God sees us, I think we'd be devastated. I think we'd be crushed. 
because we, we would have no hope. Why, God, why do I even get out of bed in the morning? What's the sense? I mean, my every step is going to be sin <laughs> or everything I, you know, it's just filled. My whole life is filled with sin. I'm thinking this, I'm thinking that. And, and my motives here, my motives there. Why do I even bother thinking anymore? What's the use of it? And yet God sees the heart. He sees the, he sees the motives behind it. And this is why we need a moment by moment relationship with God. I think it's a blessing from God that we, that we don't really know how much we sin. And we don't really know how much God puts up with us in our lives. It's, it's good that we only see, uh, we only see the sins that we see, that we're aware of, that the Holy Spirit makes us aware of. And it's, it's a blessing in disguise. So, um, I think, you know, that as Christians, we need to be thankful to God that he paid for all of our sins, the ones that we know about and also the ones that we don't know about. There's probably sins in your life, years and years, of things you did, things you 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 thought, then uh, you had no idea they were sin, and they're long gone. And uh, just, they're gone. Let them go. Don't worry about them. Uh, but God sees everything. And, you know, he says here, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. And this is how God restores us in the spirit of meekness. But, but, uh, again, uh, that we need to check our motives. We need to have a relationship with God moment by moment and have God check the reason why. Why am I doing this? Why am I going to speak to this person? after church or why am I going to call this person up? Oh, I don't mean a business reason. I mean, if you got to get your roof fixed on your house, of course you have to get things done and you have to talk to your boss and people at work and all, of course that. But I'm saying when, when you're really uh, uh, talking to uh, Christians, you know, uh, family, whatever, why are you going to say what you're saying? Is it because you're trying to build yourself up? Is it for, for self-preservation? Is it for uh, uh, to make yourself look good and 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 what what is that reason? And is it or is it for the glory of God? Is it because you're honoring God with your lips and with your mind and your thoughts and you really truly do have a heart for that person? Or is it because you're trying to get something out of this situation? All right. So he says here. You which are spiritual, restore such a one. And restore, the Greek word is katartizo. And it's in the present tense. And it means to mend, to repair. And the present tense here means that we are continually, present tense, over and over again, to be available to help mend someone's life, to exercise patience. Right? Like Jesus, like, like it says in the Gospels, if a man sin, uh, 70 times, right? Do I, am I still supposed to forgive him? Am I supposed to exercise that amount of faith? And Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. You keep exercising faith, kept exercising patience in a person's life. So present tense means we exercise patience in a person's life. And it's very difficult for us to do as Christians to exercise patience for someone who keeps falling, who keeps uh, being caught in some kind of fault. And, you know, there were Galatian believers that had wandered away from the grace of God and needed to be restored. And they were overtaken by the Judaizers' teachings and they took a false step into a life of legalism. And this is the context. They took a false step. These Some of these Galatian believers were deceived and drawn away by the Judaizers. And now the grace Christians in Galatia need, wanted to restore these other Christians back to grace. And that's what the context of what Paul is writing here. But it's for us today. 
You meet people in church that you, you used to, used to go to church. You meet people and they've been taken by something. They're drawn away from the church. They don't come to church anymore. They don't come to, uh, Sunday school or prayer meeting or whatever anymore. They're not in the Bible study anymore. And you want to restore that person and to bring them back. And as we do, we need to be careful. We'll get into this next lesson and restore them in the spirit of meekness. But here, as we, we're, we're around people all the time that, that have fallen away from church, fallen away from God for whatever reason. The enemy has come in and has tempted them with some kind of little delight and they took it and now they're gone. They don't come to church anymore. They don't come to the Bible study anymore. They don't want to talk to you anymore. They want to live their own lives in, in this new pursuit. And you're trying to restore them and bring them back, mend and heal them. And, but it takes patience. It's something that is, you need, you need patience to do that. All right. Until next lesson, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.